Good morning, everybody. Uh, New South Wales had five cases of community transmission last night, and Dr. McAnulty will go through them in detail. Two of the cases we'd already discussed yesterday, which was the gentleman that presented to Mount Druitt Hospital and uh, his household contact. So those two cases we'd reported yesterday. Uh, there have been additional two cases in the Northern Beaches. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Dr McAnulty again will report on that. And one case linked directly to the Barala cluster. So as we see, the disease is still bumbling along in the community and we need to be vigilant about that. And that's why I'm pleading for people to come forward and get tested. Uh, yesterday at 8 p.m. we only had 14,700 tests. We know it tends to dip down as a result of the weekend in the early days of the week, but we really need to have higher testing levels if we are to combat the rumblings that are still going on. And we know that it takes some time to completely get to the target of zero community transmission after there has been an outbreak, but it's so critical, so critical that we raise those testing levels. 14,700 isn't really enough for where we're up to in the pandemic. And whilst uh, all of us have been so vigilant and so good in getting those testing rates up, uh, we need to maintain that again to make sure we manage to get on top of the rumblings that are still there. Because even though we lifted the stay at home restrictions for the, uh, for the citizens of the Northern Beaches, even though uh, we've been repeating our messages about where we're up to in the pandemic, we still know, we still know that whilst those major super spreading events haven't repeated themselves, we know that there is still mopping up to do. The remnants of the disease are still there and we can't allow any of those remnants to become or lead to another super spreading event, which uh, takes us back to square one. So in order to prevent those major outbreaks, uh, in order to make sure New South Wales maintains our position now of where we're at and it actually moves forward in improving our position, we really need to get those testing rates up. Can I also stress and repeat the fact that it's so important for us, given the new strains of the virus, if you happen to be in quarantine or a loved one that you know is in quarantine and the onset of symptoms uh, commence uh, during the quarantine period, if you have one of those strains that are new, uh, that are more vigorous, you will have to start the 14 days on the onset of symptoms. And we know that this time frame works and is appropriate because we are picking up infections, both from people who've been in isolation in quarantine, but also out in the community in isolation. We're still picking up cases in those last days of, of being in isolation. And it's really important to make sure that whether you're in isolation at home, that you stay there for the 14 days, and whether you're in quarantine, depending on the strain of virus you have, that you appreciate that even at the end of the 14 days, if you're still infectious, if you're still deemed to be infectious, you still need to make sure that, um, that you appreciate you could have to stay a few extra days as a result of that. So the strongest message today is please do not assume this outbreak is over in New South Wales. The rumblings are there, we're still mopping up. Uh, whilst we're confident that there hasn't been another super spreading event, that's only for today. It can happen again if we don't stay vigilant and we really need to get those testing rates up and I'm appealing to the community. Whether you have the mildest of symptoms, uh, please make sure you come forward and get tested and follow the rules. Uh, if you are a casual contact or a close contact, please make sure you're looking up the health website consistently to see what venues are being put up there and whether you've been exposed. And we also appeal to people, and I want to say this point, and Dr McAnulty will repeat this point. Please make sure that if you are deemed to be positive or deemed uh, to have been contacted by health officials, feel comfortable in telling us all your circumstances, the situation you found yourself in, where you've been, who your close contacts are, because that information empowers us to get on top of it very quickly. That information is not passed on to anybody. Health doesn't pass it on to me. They don't pass it on to anybody. That information is private and confidential, but what it does do is allow our experts to get on top of it as soon as possible, and that's really, really important. So if you do have someone in your family or if you are someone who's been contacted by health, please feel comfortable to be open and transparent with all the information that you have, because that will ensure that we've prevented any new lines of transmission getting steam. I'll now hand over to Dr McAnulty to give his daily uh, medical report, and then I will take questions. Thank you. Thanks, Premier, and uh, good morning. 
So I'd like to report on the cases uh, from yesterday to 8 o'clock last night. Uh, New South Wales recorded five new locally acquired COVID-19 uh, cases to 8 o'clock last night. There are 11 new overseas acquired cases, bringing the total cases in New South Wales for the whole pandemic to 4,845. Of the five new cases, one is linked to the Barala cluster. It was a woman in her 40s who uh, had been a known close, close contact and in isolation had visited the BWS in Barala on the 29th of December. This case was in isolation during her infectious period and reflects, as the Premier said, the importance of uh, doing the right thing, staying in isolation, because sometimes you can have quite long incubation periods. People need to stay in isolation for the full 14 days as directed by public health officials. Uh, it's also important that people are tested at the beginning, the, the time they go into isolation, and at the end, so that you need, and if you get any symptoms throughout. Another two cases were whose infection remains, um, source of infection remains under investigation, reside in the northern area of the northern beaches. There are a man and a woman in their 40s, and their household contacts each other. This highlights the importance for everyone in the northern beaches to maintain vigilance, because we've seen um, now a couple of cases or so uh, in the last several days of people in the northern beaches being diagnosed with COVID-19. So in, particularly in that community, be very vigilant, come forward for testing if you have even the mildest of symptoms. The two other cases reported uh, were mentioned yesterday. A man in his 40s who attended the Mount Druitt Emergency Department on Saturday the 9th of January. The second of these two cases is a woman in her 40s, a household contact of this man. The source of, uh, of their infection remains under investigation. Uh, close contacts have been identified and are being isolated and tested. Um, we'd like um, to thank those people who have come forward for testing. As you can see, it's so important that we find these cases to help them and help prevent onward transmission to the rest of the community. So you're doing a really big favour to yourself, to your family and to your community by coming forward for that testing. But the testing numbers are way too low, 14,000 yesterday. We need to see 25,000 plus tests a day. And we particularly need to see testing in places such as the Northern Beaches, such as Western Sydney, where we've seen cases recently. But it applies throughout the country, throughout New South Wales. Um, there are a number of venues of concern that we've highlighted uh, in the last uh, day. And I'd like to just highlight a few of those from last night. But it's important that every one of us regularly reviews the uh, government health site, the government website, to check on the number of venues and if you've been to any of them, because they do get updated on a regular basis. Um, anyone who attended the following venue for more than an hour during the time period is considered a close contact and must immediately get tested and isolate for 14 days, regardless of whether a negative test is received. And that's a Blacktown Workers Sports Club Grange Buffet, uh, and that was from Sunday the 10th of January between 12 p.m. and 1.16 p.m. Uh, and for more than an hour on Sunday the 3rd of January between 11.40 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. And there are a number of venues that we're considering people who have been there as casual contacts who must get tested immediately and self-isolate until they get a negative result. And there's a list of those including Blacktown Workers Sports Club Grange Buffet for less than an hour, uh, Campsie Superfresh, Hilton Park, Australia Post, Campsie Hills Seafood Shop, and a number of venues uh, at uh, Warrywood, including Coles, Woolworths, Aldi, and Revel. So please check the details on the website if you've been to any of those uh, places. Again, testing is such a crucial thing um, that we need to protect ourselves and our families. But the other important thing is to abide by those rules that have been brought in recently over the December and uh, January period, which are protecting us all. One of those important ways we see COVID spread is in family gatherings and um, parties. So that's why there are restrictions of having no more than five visitors to your house. That's really important. Please abide by the loot rules. They do change occasionally, so check the government website again for the details before you plan any visits or having people over. Um, it's really important that you know public health is here to help protect the community, and 
we do that through a range of measures, but one of the important measures is uh, finding people with the infection and then working with those people to understand where they may have been to acquire the infection and where they might have been that other people might have been exposed to them. There's no sense of guilt here, you know, this is, this is a disease that, that, that uh, affects us all and so we need to uh, work together to actually combat it effectively. And part of the way of doing that is understanding all the places you've been, either before you were sick and then after you were sick. Um, now it's really hard to remember what you did two weeks ago, but we are asking people to do that, to re think through their minds what they did up to 14 days ago and what they did in the last few days. Um, and that can be tough, and it might take several phone calls uh, and looking at your phones and looking at your diaries and talking to your other family members where you might have been. Um, so please do that if you are infected with uh, COVID and don't hesitate to come back and call us again. We'll call you a few times just to make sure we've got the information, but don't hesitate if you remember something, as often people do, is don't be embarrassed, um, just give us a call and uh, we'll put that into the, um, the mix of what we need to do in terms of preventing onward spread. Thanks very much. Question. Um, I just want to emphasise that uh, this virus hasn't given up causing us grief as yet, and so it's so important uh, that the communities right across New South Wales, and particularly in Greater Sydney, go and get tested. Now, we've seen some incredible work done by the area of the Northern Beaches and Western Sydney, but as uh, Dr Chant, the Premier, just emphasised yesterday, it was not our finest moment in terms of uh, getting numbers of people out for testing. I understand, uh, particularly in our multicultural community, that some members have come from countries where information doesn't remain private when you go to see your health official. Here in Australia, 100%. When you go and see your doctor, it's confidential. When you talk to a public health official, no matter what you've done, no matter how many people you've had to your place, you need to know it's confidential. We want you to tell us the whole truth and nothing but the truth, because that helps us get uh, get this virus under control. I emphasise that. I'd also just want to call on the, uh, the community leaders in Western Sydney uh, to make sure that the various multicultural communities, our wonderful multicultural communities that make up this fabulous nation, um, do get the message to their communities that uh, stick to the, the, the limits at the moment, listen to the public health advice. I know it's great to have large families around, but it has proved to be a little challenging in the last few weeks. So please stick with the five people in your house, five visitors to your house, and also make sure that they understand, your community members understand, they must actually talk to the public health officials and they must do their damnedest to remember who has been with them in the previous few weeks because that will make it much more empowered for public health officials to actually make sure we can bring this virus uh, well and truly to where we want it. Thank you. Um, said that rapid genome um, testing was, was being undertaken on the Mount Druitt, man who presented at Mount Druitt Hospital um, and, and his household contacts. Has that rapid genome testing come back yet and what strain of the virus they have? No, no I don't, don't have, have that information. We'll be looking at that today when it comes in. One of the venues of concern that was listed at the Blacktown uh, uh, Workers Sports Club is the range buffer. Now, is that a buffet restaurant in the true sense of the word? Are buffet restaurants allowed? And if that was operating as a, as a full buffet restaurant, are you concerned about that? Look, I don't have the details of that particular venue. We'll certainly uh, look into that. Um, and the restaurants have to have COVID safety plans and, and so on. So um, while I don't have the details, we'll rest assured we'll look into that. But is buffet dining allowed currently? Um, the, the important thing is that there are plans so that the public are protected. And so anything where there might be exposure of food or people to each other is, um, is, is not allowed. So essentially, uh, each business has to look at how they provide uh, services and make sure they're done in a COVID safe way. In the New South Wales Health that there is still um, undetected change of transmission in the northern zone of the northern beaches, given that we've had this um, couple test positive today with no known source, and also the gentleman from last week. And can I also get an update on whether you've been able to trace the source of the infection from the gentleman in the northern beaches that tested positive last week? So um, there is always concern in the community uh, particularly in the northern beaches where we've had 
a recent outbreak in Western Sydney where we've had cases that there's undetected uh, chains of transmission. And that's why that testing message is so important for people who are uh, not in close contacts or casual contacts. We're urging you to come and get tested when the public health advice appears. But importantly, anyone who has even the mildest of symptoms coming forward for testing. We believe we'll see more cases in the coming days and we need to flush those out. We need people's assistance to be able to do that by coming forward. You know it's inconvenient to get tested. We know it's inconvenient to spend a day uh, while you wait for the result, but we, um, it's just so important to protect everyone else. There's been a lot of commentary from other states, Premiers, in regards to New South Wales' response to COVID. Are you confident with what your, you and your team have put in place? I'm um, extremely confident. I think we have the best health contact tracing team in the nation and that confidence allows us to make decisions which don't place unnecessary burdens on our citizens. Let me be clear, we wouldn't hesitate to make decisions to keep the community safe if we felt we need to do it, as in further decisions. But when uh, you're trying to strike the right balance between keeping pe people with good mental health, good well-being, keep them in jobs, keeping life as normal as possible whilst combating the virus, you need to find that healthy balance. And I think in New South Wales, our decision making always strives to do that. Of course, public health and safety always comes first. But because we do have such great confidence in our health system, our health team, we're able to make decisions which perhaps other state governments aren't prepared to make, and that's a matter for them. To you that we still don't know in regards to Northern Beaches how that overseas strain actually reached the community there? Oh, look, obviously, which is why we had those stay at home provisions for the time we had to make sure that it covered at least an infectious period. So, of course, we're concerned that all, not all the answers are there in terms of how the disease got from that first case out into the Northern Beaches and then how those super spreading events occurred. We do know. But what it does tell us is, is a reminder of what type of activity is high risk what type of activity actually causes those super spreading events. And I know that sometimes people gave us a bit of a hard time, especially me, when I said no mingling, no singing, no dancing, but we know these super spreading events. When you undertake those activities and there's someone with the virus in the room, it will spread it to, to lots of other people and that's exactly what happened, uh, which is why we went back to the settings we have in place. And at the moment, the setting we do want everybody to focus on the most is not to have more than five people from outside the household come into your household on any given day. It's really important. Try and reduce the interactions between households. We're not saying don't do it at all, but please have a good common sense approach. Don't have more than five people into your home uh, at the one time in the one day, because uh, if there are any remnants of the virus and people are still moving about in that high level of activity, the chance of spreading is higher. And until we do the mop, finish the mopping up, we don't want to see another super spreading event. Uh, which is why we have the current restrictions in place. But the one restriction that we want everybody to focus on at the moment is not having more than five people into your household on any given day. And of course, the other strong message for today is please keep up those rates of testing. The high rates of testing, coupled with our community's response to doing the right thing, has allowed us to keep the virus at bay. And we want that to continue, but it won't continue if we don't get those testing rates up. And also, if we're not more careful with our own activity, let's try at this time to be thoughtful about what we're doing and where we're going. Let's have a common sense approach. And uh, common sense goes a long way during a pandemic. Other states, other states say that a lot of our restrictions aren't strict enough. And that, are you out of touch or out of, sorry, out of step or at odds with how other states are dealing with the virus now? We sort of New South Wales on its own. Well, other states have chosen to close their borders very quickly. They've chosen to have lockdowns for prolonged periods very quickly, and that's a matter for them. But what we want to do in New South Wales is ensure, firstly, the health and wellbeing of our citizens by putting health first, but also considering other issues which impact our citizens. And I'm deeply grateful to the community for supporting our strategy because the community, without the community's really positive response, we wouldn't be where we are. But what we have to accept, and I think the rollout of the vaccination is really allowing this to dawn on people, is we have to live with this and we don't know for how long. 
I don't want a situation in New South Wales that exists in other states where there's a lack of certainty, things are done very quickly, uh, without perhaps the same kind of consideration we give in New South Wales. And that's a matter for other state leaders. But I don't want to subject our citizens in New South Wales to that. I want us to have a situation where, yes, sometimes we do have to move quickly. But generally speaking, I want people to know that we always strive to maintain that level of normality where we can, because even with the rollout of the vaccine, until you have enough people vaccinated in any given community and until uh, there's nations on, on the world that are travelling and, and have those high rates of infection, we are subject to all of that. And we have to be very thoughtful about how we live with COVID, given it could be with us for longer than what we would hope. And that's why it's really important to have those settings in New South Wales. We stand by those settings and I have absolute confidence in the, the health the health team. We should be heading towards suppression as opposed to eradication. Uh, I support what National Cabinet has endorsed. That is zero community transmission. Anyone who thinks uh, we're going to eliminate or eradicate this disease unfortunately doesn't appreciate what the pandemic means. Um, but what we have all signed up to as state leaders is zero community transmission, and that is something New South Wales strongly supports, endorses and works towards. In fact, the restrictions we have in place now are to get to zero community transmission, but we do it in a way which doesn't overburden our citizens every single day. And we also have to appreciate that when you are welcoming back overseas travellers, Australians coming back to Australia, uh, you do have to accept that the disease is still there. And I don't think there's any state in the nation that hasn't had cases come up in hotel quarantine. So to suggest that you can somehow eliminate the disease from Australia, I don't think is realistic. And, and that's why it's really important for us to support the National Cabinet strategy. Now, every state might have a different way of getting to zero community transmission, and that's a matter for them. But I don't believe keeping your borders closed and inflicting pain and suffering on thousands of people is the way to go. That's just the New South Wales strategy. But, but all of us have that aim of zero community transmission. I'll come back to you, sorry. The yeah. WA Premier yesterday said that all states and territories except New South Wales are working, to, are working on an elimination strategy as opposed to suppression. The Queensland Premier today said that that's not the case in her state. How can people trust the Premier's on what's being agreed to at National Cabinet when there's such inconsistency between measures. Well, I think the best thing to do is just to look at the decisions of National Cabinet. Zero community transmission is our aim, and that means we don't want to see the virus spread in the community, and I think that's logical, because that's what we can control to an extent through public policy. We can't control the number of people who come back from overseas, Australians who have the disease. We've, we can control the number of people coming back, which is why I'm very pleased, and I have to say as a State Premier of New South Wales, who's, been, who's welcomed back 100,000 Australians since March last year, I'm pleased we're having the rate for the next month to give us a pause, to give us a rest, to evaluate what the new strains of the virus are doing. And I appreciate that for some families that causes heartbreak, but we've certainly been lifting our weight on this. And it's a fine balance. Imagine if you had a loved one who's been stranded overseas somewhere, wants to come back home. It's easy for us to be critical of people wanting to come back home, but if that was your loved one, um, we also have to you know, consider those compassionate issues. I'm relieved that we'll be pausing the rate for at least a month, so it's pleasing that New South Wales will take in 1,500 Australians a week rather than 3,000. It gives us a break, it gives us all those workers, and can I thank all of our quarantine workers. It's an unbelievable job they're doing, whether it's the health, the police, um, the federal agencies which we work with, uh, the cleaners, everybody in the system, the hotel operators, everybody in the system has done an unbelievable job. But this pause allows us to uh, consider what the strains of the virus are doing, consider our settings moving forward. But to suggest that we can somehow eliminate this, I mean, look at New Zealand. They tried the elimination strategy and then they had cases pop up again. So you can you can try and adopt the elimination strategy, but it's it's not realistic. What we what we should back to the, but just oh, back, sorry. Back, back to the question originally sorry. though. Is there an issue with how the I'll decisions, just finish that and go there. Sorry, sorry. Is there a decision? Is there an issue with how the decisions of national cabinet are being communicated directly to the Australian people, given that the states are saying different things are being decided on? Look that's, a, uh, look, that's a matter for state premiers. I'm someone who makes decisions uh, on behalf of our government 
uh, based on science, based on the facts, based on the health advice. That's what our citizens need and deserve. And it's it's up to others as to how they lead their states. And I'm not going to comment, even though it's very tempting sometimes to respond in certain ways to comments others make. I'd prefer not to. I prefer to lead in the way that I think our citizens want me to and the way they want our government to respond to the pandemic, which is based on health, science and the facts. National Cabinet, can I say, is an incredibly important forum because it allows us to have advice from the federal health agencies or the, the, the chief medical officers combined. Plus, it also allows us to compare what's going on in different states, and that process is critical. And those decisions that we take from National Cabinet are also critical. But how you get to those decisions or how you get to those targets in every state depends on the governments of those states. And certainly, we're very clear in New South Wales about our strategy, about our plan, about what we feel is in the best interests of our citizens. There is always a risk. Um, not, you've acknowledged that there is always a risk of uh, the, the virus leaking out of the hotel quarantine system. And considering New South Wales is taking so many um, travellers compared with every other state, is it time for New South Wales to consider only taking New South Wales residents and not taking residents of another state, for example, Western Australia? Look, I think that would be a very disappointing outcome because people have different situations. We have New South Wales residents that arrive in Brisbane or arrive in Perth, and I certainly want, wouldn't want to disadvantage our citizens that are arriving at different ports. Everybody's circumstances are different. For some people who can't afford a particular flight overseas, the only way, they might be a Sydney resident, but the only way they can get back to Australia is via Perth or via Brisbane, and we have to accept that. I think what all of us need to do uh, as state leaders is accept that this is a shared responsibility and all of us have to play our part. And I think the month pause gives us time to do that by halving the rates in New South Wales. Other states have not had those rates reduced to the same extent because they're not carrying as much of the burden. But I'm relieved that for New South Wales we're able to evaluate uh, how we move forward to make sure every state uh, does their fair share, but I don't think we should discriminate between states because we have citizens who, through no fault of their own, who their own personal circumstances might be landing in Melbourne or Brisbane, and we would want them to be treated compassionately, and we should treat other Australian citizens compassionately. Yes, we're all members of a state, but we're also all Australians. Let's not forget that. Australia Day is just around the corner. I'm a proud Australian. I think all of us can be proud of the way in which Australia has navigated this really difficult time and I think we should always remember that, that uh, we should be compassionate to all of our citizens and a lot of the decisions we take on borders, on other issues, I mean it took us quite a considerable time to, to close the Victorian border. We knew the hardship it would cause people and we, we held our nerve for a significant period of time but there was a time after which we couldn't anymore when the rates of the disease were so high. And I just wish that others um, would consider all those impacts because uh, in addition to being members of a state, we are all citizens of Australia and I think we need to show compassion to one another and appreciate that we'd feel differently if we were in the shoes of other people. And I often put myself in the shoes of other people. When you're making big decisions, you think, what if that was my loved one? Or what if that was my circumstance? How would I react? And that's why that level of compassion has to be central to decisions and I couldn't care less at the end of the day what criticism is levelled at me. What I want to know we're doing is what is in the best interests of the vast majority of our citizens. You're never going to please everybody but I feel that we need to make sure that we're always making decisions based on what the vast majority of our citizens need us to do. Something you mentioned at the start about the 14 day mandatory isolation period. Um, you seem to be suggesting that maybe the advice is changing or evolving, that people could still get sick uh, outside of that 14 day period if they've come into contact with someone. Is the advice changing? And you said it was strain dependent. Are we looking at, have we had any cases of those, those more virulent strains in New yeah. South Wales yet? Certainly the advice in terms of community isolation isn't changing. You need to be isolated for the full 14 days and that is the best advice. However, if you're in quarantine and you have the onset of symptoms from one of these more virulent strains, one of these more contagious strains, the 14 days starts from the day you develop those symptoms. Previously it was just 14 days. But given how transmissible and how lethal the new strains are, uh, you now, if you're in quarantine and you develop symptoms during your 14-day isolation, unfortunately for you, your count starts 
from the day you develop symptoms. But I should also qualify that by saying the health experts often say to us, sometimes there are unusual cases where people are still infectious or deemed to be at risk at the end of that 14 days. And that's why the health experts make a determination on individual cases. So please know that whilst there is a general principle in place, uh, there could be exceptions and we have to be open to that. And I know for loved ones it's always difficult, uh, especially for those who've been separated from families for a long time. But this is to keep the community safe. We can't, we can't risk having people go out into the community who may still have a level of infectious, infectiousness because that can undermine our entire strategy. And that's why, given the more virulent strains, I'm not attributing it to one country because this is, these new strains are now in 30 or 40 countries. And if there are people in hotel quarantine in, in Sydney who have those uh, more virulent strains, Unfortunately for them, the count time, the, the 14 days starts from the onset of symptoms as opposed to when they arrived in Sydney. One of your comments earlier, you were talking about people not giving I'll get to all the questions yeah, today, information yeah. to, to health authorities. Yeah. Has there been instances where there's been gaps or you feel that people aren't telling the truth? Yeah, look, there has been situations where people have been afraid to tell us everything because they're worried about getting in trouble or they're worried about having broken the rules. And can I assure you that's not the case? Um, health are so good. I mean, they don't, they don't pass on to anybody, including me, including other government authorities. They don't pass on any confidential information. And what's really important for us is for people to feel, feel open and not scared and not fearful. We just want to know the information so that we can deal with it. So I just appeal to everybody, when you're speaking to a health expert, please just uh, give us all the information you have. Don't be concerned about any judgments or don't be concerned about any retribution, quite the contrary. Health just approaches it from a health perspective. They just want to know what the situation is because some people are remembering things after a certain number of days or providing information which isn't as timely as what we would like. Most people are absolutely outstanding. Uh, can I say the vast majority of people have been amazing spending hours on the phone talking to our health experts. But for a small number of people, we just say to you, please don't be afraid to give health people uh, all the information you have in a timely way so that we can then obviously deal with it in a timely way. If they're coming forward with this information in one of those health interviews, if they are admitting that they've broken the rules or committed an offence, can you give them a guarantee that they won't be prosecuted or fined based on what they tell that, that contact Well, certainly health, health treats those matters extremely confidentially and doesn't pass on that information. Well, well obviously, uh, obviously our intent is for, first of all, can I say, our expectation and our desire is that everybody does the right thing. But if for whatever reason you've accidentally lapsed or there's been an issue, please just give us the information because it helps us save lives. We are talking about saving lives. We've got one case in ICU at the moment. Uh, please don't jeopardise your closest people, especially now this time of year. We're still seeing family gatherings. We're still seeing people get together, especially those who haven't been able to visit one another during the process. I mean, all my relatives live on the north. A lot of them live on the northern beaches. So we're going through that process about how to do it safely. And I just appeal to everybody just to consider that. But when you are providing information to health, you have nothing to fear. The health officials uh, are used to this. They're professionals. Uh, this is their job. And first and foremost, they care about uh, your health and well-being. Can you ask about the uh, voucher system, $100 vouchers? Any update on when they'll be rolled out and why that's been delayed? Yes, yeah, certainly. I'll try and get an update on that today. But we're hoping to get them rolled out as soon as possible. And we know it will be a huge boost. Uh, on two fronts. Firstly, in supporting the hospitality sector, but also supporting families who are doing it tough. Uh, let's remember a lot of people are working less hours or have been off work, uh, and, uh, and you know the household pressure on cost of living is there. So I'm as keen as anybody to get those voucher system up and running as soon as possible, and I will get an update and update the community tomorrow on that. One case in ICU. Um, is that the gentleman that presented to the Mount Brook Hospital Emergency Department? And if so, is that... Concerned. I'm not sure. I'll ask Dr McAnulty to provide information later. But, but, but can I say, I assume health response will be, that's confidential information. Yeah. Is that your response, Dr McAnulty? It is his response. So, uh, but, but what we will say is, uh, because if that, they may not want to be identified, but I can confirm there's one person in ICU. And they were initially linked with a returning um, family of infectious travellers in the US. Were they residents of New South Wales, that family? Or can you advise if they were... Uh, I don't know, but we'll try and provide that information to you. Can that we'll see any restrictions ease this week? Look, um, 
Look, I'll be honest, that depends on the health advice, but unlikely given where we're at, because we're still mopping up. We're still seeing community transmission, even though in most instances, they're household contacts or people already in isolation, but we have had a couple of examples where they're still unlinked and that's always concerned. So obviously the Mount Druitt case yesterday and the Northern Beaches uh, cases today, I'm convinced we'll eventually find the link for, but at this point in time, uh, those things are still not yet uh, established. So whilst that's going on, I doubt well, these restrictions, I'm just being upfront, but if the health advice changes on that, uh, we will of course uh, do that. Do you consider public health orders to force people or encourage people to take up that vaccine? Look, uh, we've never been in a position uh, where we want to go down that path. Uh, but can I say that I personally can't wait for the vaccine to be available. I'll be one of the, if I'm allowed, obviously I'll wait my turn, but I'd, I'd love to have the vaccine myself. That's my attitude. Uh, I think that um, for protecting our community, if there is one available uh, as soon as possible, that people should consider taking it. And I know in the first instance it's important for our frontline workers, our healthcare workers, our cleaners, people who are exposed to the virus every day to have access to it first. But I think once the public is able to have access to it, I would encourage people to really take it. I'm encouraging my parents who are over 80. You know, certain categories of people should really consider, in the first instance, lining up to take the, the vaccine. Victoria, in December, you wanted to get people back working in offices. Obviously, the situation's changed and people have been on holidays. What's the message? Do you want people back in offices? Look, the message is have common sense. But because we've got certain restrictions in place that assists people if they want to go into the office. The fact that you have to wear a mask on public transport gives us that fourth line of defence. So we haven't increased the number of people that can be on a bus or a train or a ferry at any given time, but we've now said you have to wear a mask. So there's inbuilt safety mechanisms which are there for businesses and for individuals to make those decisions themselves. Pleasingly, a lot of businesses have had some kind of roster system where some people are going into the office and others are staying home, and that's a matter for them. We certainly don't want to discourage any activity so long as it's done in a COVID safe way. But some of the restrictions we've put in place, which the community is now getting used to, including wearing masks on public transport, help us manage people going back to work in the office if that's what they want to do, if that's what their business wants to do, if that's what their organisation wants to do. Uh, so long as you're COVID safe, you should feel free to undertake activity such as employment, uh, but make sure your workplace is COVID safe and make sure that you're taking COVID safe precautions. But certainly some of those settings we have in place now are about how can we live with COVID in a safe way moving forward without really knowing when the end date is of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll go there and then go there. Sorry. Yeah. Do you think it's confusing? Is it something we might see rolled out? Oh, uh, look, that's, that's something uh, for Victoria to, to manage, and uh, it's not something we'd do in New South Wales. I'm sorry, I can't hear your question. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Thank you for being safe. States and territories to kind of hands off our GST. Would you ask the Commonwealth to maybe force the WA to comply with, I don't know, national cabinet agreements and border closures or hotspots if it means kind of taking away some of their GST tape? Oh, look, I, I don't really want to uh, make comment on that, um, only to say that I just think um, all of us have a responsibility as state premiers, as state leaders, to think outside the boundaries of our own state. Uh, we're Australians. Uh, yes, we reside in particular states, but we also have to consider, I think, our actions in view of the nation. Uh, that's certainly what I feel, and I know we have citizens wanting to move around uh, the nation, New South Wales citizens wanting to move around the nation, and I would expect them to be treated with compassion as much as we treat every other state citizen with compassion. At the, at the end of the day, we're one nation, and uh, the way that I think we've dealt with the pandemic as a nation is something to be proud of. But let's not let our citizens down by lacking that level of compassion when we're making decisions. And all I say to people is just base your decisions on the health advice and the science and the data and, uh, and make sure that we think about uh, the consequences on people when we're making certain decisions. Oh, look, obviously um, we supported a number of those recommendations, those 
recommendations came from many different political parties. Uh, we don't share all of those views, but in the main, we've adopted the main recommendations. Do we need to do more on that policy front? Absolutely. I mean, I want New South Wales to do better in protecting koalas and, and natural species, and uh, I look forward to developing policies in relation to that. Buses we use in New South Wales is safe. Oh, look, I know that um, we're always, our authorities are always uh, making sure safety standards are upheld. I'm just relieved there weren't any major incidents or major injuries or fatalities as a result of that. It's a scary situation. Uh, but I have confidence that our transport uh, authorities will get on top of that, get to the root cause as soon as possible, and make sure it doesn't happen again. Acknowledge that last year this played out quite publicly. Uh, is your party being held back by your minor coalition? No, I think I think there's more we can do on public land. There's more we can do, generally speaking, in that policy area. And I'm looking forward to working with colleagues and the community, I have to say. The community has also spoken loudly on this issue. I think people want to see us have a really uh, strong policy position in relation to protecting those species, especially when we recall those images of what happened during the bushfires. And we know that there's been major disruption in our natural habitats around the state. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with uh, my colleagues and also the community to have uh, stronger public policy in that area. I mean, there's two cases of COVID in Northern Beaches today. Have we given up the hunt for patient zero of that Avalon cluster, or is it still going? No, look, we never give up the hunt in New South Wales, and sometimes it might take us hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, but we always get to the bottom of what we think happened, and uh, I'm confident we'll get there. Uh, but we also have to give our experts time to make those connections, and often it can take one expert in, in one kind of example, to work out a crossover between two people who are completely unrelated, uh, to work out uh, those, those answers. And uh, I'm confident we'll get there. I don't know when that will occur. But um, as Dr Chan and Dr McAnulty also say, sometimes we don't get the answers. But I'm confident that if anyone will, it'll be the New South Wales Health Team. You have noted that you wanted to get a higher take of GST for New South Wales. Are you worried that might create some ill will between you and WA and you need it for hotel quarantine and you need it for border closures? No, I think, um, look. No doubt each state premier has um, their views of the world. Um, we don't all agree on everything, which is fine, uh, but I think respect goes a long way. And um, I think just appreciating what New South Wales has done on behalf of Australia in terms of returning 100,000 travellers since March last year is a pretty big deal. And um, that's why we have, like overnight, we had 11 cases in quarantine. Uh, obviously, from the 15th of January, um, that rate will be reduced to half and hopefully we'll see subsidence in the number of cases coming through. But every single case you have that's positive anywhere in Australia is a risk. And how you manage that risk, though, is, is, is the secret of whether you're successful or not. It's how you manage the community outbreaks when they occur. And I say when they occur because we can't pretend we're going to go through the rest of the pandemic without another outbreak. It's going to happen. But it's how you deal with it and how you let your citizens live in the meantime. And in New South Wales, we want our citizens to live as freely as possible, to maintain their livelihoods as much as possible, but in a COVID safe way. And that's always been our objective. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.